On behalf of Sheriff Garvey, uh, Deputy Kayleen, and our entire staff, we want to welcome everyone this morning to our ninth annual reentry breakfast. My name's Mindy Cady, and I'm the director of treatment here, and uh, I'm responsible for none of these things. I just happen to support all the great people and participants that are, you know, here as our guests today and who work in our facility. Uh, the culinary arts program has prepared a great breakfast for us. And one of the things I did... They're all available to answer questions that you may have. Uh, we have a couple of posters up with their first names on them. And all of these gentlemen are out in the back. And they're happy to answer programs, I mean questions rather, regarding any of our reentry and treatment programs that we have. And actually, most all of these guys have done about just about everything. And this particular group didn't just assemble this morning. You know, they first, they had to get engaged in treatment planning and reentry treatment planning. And, you know, they came in, they had an assessment done. They're all members of phase one, two, or three. They've completed serve safe, the foodborne pathogens classes. They've done specific math and science and voc ed classes. All that stuff that they needed to do to be able to be in a position to present us with what they've presented us with today. So um, it wasn't just a, you know, a couple of days of preparation. These guys have been at it since they walked through the door and they have put recovery first. And in putting recovery first, it enables you to do everything else because you're available. And that's what we ask for them to do. Uh, Reentry is a combined effort, and clearly this entire room is a fabulous example of that. Um, Hamden County's here, Franklin, Berkshire, the Department of Correction, the local and state police, probation, parole, Worcester County, um, I mean, there are so many people here and so many people that deserve our thanks and acknowledgement, I couldn't possibly name everyone. Um, and uh, if I started to, I'd probably leave the room a nervous wreck for the rest of the day, worried about who I might have forgotten. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, in that it's part of a larger community. You know, it's not something we do here at Hampshire County. It's not done just at Hamden County. It's not done just at any county. It's not done by a probation office. It's not done at a community service provider like ServiceNet. It takes all of us to provide good reentry. And actually, our speakers today are all leaders of portions of our larger um, community. We have uh, Mayor Narkowitz with us here today. We have District Attorney David Sullivan is with us. We have the Commissioner for the Parole Board, Josh Wall, here. We have the Commissioner for um, the Department of Probation, Ron Corbett. We have Lewis Spencer, the Commissioner for the Department of Correction, and our Under Secretary for Public Safety, Sandra McCroon. And um, we were, many of us were at a, um, at a three-day conference about a month or so ago, and uh, it's wonderful to have you all join us because we are part, we may be a small community here. What we do here, we feel like we do really well. And our community is part of a much larger community of which all these people up here are representative of. Uh, so with that, I um, would like to introduce the man who's responsible for all this here. Nine years ago, the sheriff tasked us with focusing on successful reentry as a mission. You know, our first assignment was to share information in a very meaningful way with other agencies. Don't think about barriers. Don't think about what might make it problematic. His charge to us was to do it and to make sure that we provide everyone with as much information as possible about the, gen the men that are leaving our facility and what we've done for them, what they need in the future, and how do we best connect services. And many of the people that are here um, <clears throat> are a significant part of that. So with that, I, um, I'm going to introduce the man who reminds us every day that men come here as punishment and not for punishment. We're working with a number of individuals who have not had all the opportunities that many of us have had in our lives. And um, he directs us on a daily basis. Sheriff Garvey. <laughs> Thank you.
I told her to say all those nice things. <laughs> Most of you know better. The, uh, I want to just uh, welcome you all and again join with the rest of our staff in thanking all of you for the part that you play in supporting the programs that go on here. We are very, very, very fortunate to have a very dedicated staff that works tirelessly to, to make sure that these programs are both meaningful and appropriate for the inmate population. Obviously, you, you witnessed some of that with the culinary arts program, which uh, I think is second to none. You will, you will see it with our, with our uh, canine program. You will you'll see it with the program that is so successfully uh, operated for parenting. None of this could happen without support from the community, but even from the larger community. These gentlemen that are sitting here to my right, all of them have been very instrumental in lending a hand. They're just a phone call away and joining and helping us with the philosophy that we so much endure. And on my left, the district attorney, no matter how busy he is, and no matter how many hands he's shaking, he's always got time for us. He's just a phone call away. We're very, very fortunate to have Dave Sullivan in his position. With that, I won't say any more because he has the power to indict. <laughs> the mayor of the city of Northampton, and we say a very, very unique city in itself. I will not say any more about the city of Northampton. <laughs> Sandra, the undersecretary of public safety, just a very, very difficult job with so many agencies under her wing, but I don't know how she does it, but she does it and does it very, very well. And for all of you people out there, all of you have played a part in the recovery of the people that are here today. We are very, very fortunate to have some of the, some of the people from our sister counties here today. We, we welcome you because it, there's no place that it's done better than in Hampshire County. I promise you. <laughs> if anyone tells Mike Ash I said that, <laughs> I'll be held. But seriously, it's because of the staff that's here. I want to thank the enforcement community. You know, those are the people that bring us the business. Get out there and arrest those people. You know, un unemployment is tough. But anyway, thank you all for all you do, not only today, but throughout the entire year. And I especially want to say a big thank you for the beautiful and wonderful staff that we have here at Hampshire County. Thank you and good morning. And I want to just especially thank uh, Sheriff Garvey and his staff. It's a remarkable place and uh, when you send uh, people to the Hampshire House of Corrections, uh, you know one thing, that if that individual wants to change their life, they have an opportunity here. And it really takes a community uh, to help with that change. And everybody here in the, this room is part of that change. And I like to look at it as the HOC is the house of change. And the, the programs that are here for reentry, uh, the philosophy here is that reentry st starts on day one. And we look at our role as a district attorney's office to be a partner uh, with the sheriff's office, with probation, and to know that the individuals here, every single one of them is gonna come back to us. They're our people. They're not those people, they're our people. And if we don't treat them with dignity and respect while they're here, that modeling behavior uh, is not gonna come back to the community. And I can say without a doubt that this is the one place in the world where corrections really does help change behavior, where dignity and respect are there every day and every moment and that modeling behavior that comes from the sheriff who knows everybody by a first name basis down to his staff that do remarkable work gives that dignity and respect back to these individuals so that they can come back to our community and hopefully have those changes in their lives where they don't become reoffenders and don't come back into the system. Certainly some people do and it's not for any lack of effort on the folks that are here. So before I uh, close, I just want to recognize uh, Mindy Katie. 
Mindy has done a remarkable job uh, in looking at the programming in the House of Corrections to make sure it's been relevant. We look at the culinary arts uh, majors here, the folks that have excelled. That's just one example of how do you help people build skills so that when they come back into a community, the community wants them, the community needs them, and the community values them. So Mindy, um, in addition to everybody else on the staff, and certainly uh, on behalf of the District Attorney's Office, I want to thank you for all the work that you have done here in making changes in people's lives that make a difference. So thank you. That's right. So, uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you and welcome you all to the city of Northampton. And again, join uh, District Attorney Sullivan in congratulating Sheriff Garvey for his leadership and his vision, and to all of his staff uh, for the work that they do uh, with, and, and, and that we're all celebrating today. I also want to acknowledge some city of Northampton folks that are here. Um, Lieutenant Ken Padnote is here. Um, I know that uh, Joe Russo and, and Steve Connor from our Veteran Services uh, Department is here. Uh, the city of Northampton is very committed to working with the sheriff and his staff uh, on these reentry programs. I'm really proud of the programs that our veteran service agent is uh, are doing with veterans, in particular here at the at the House of Corrections. And again, congratulations on a ninth year, and I look forward to coming back for the tenth year next year. Thanks. Mayor. Uh, now I would like to ask the chairperson, the, well, I'm sorry, the commissioner for the Massachusetts Parole Board, Josh Wall, if you'd like to say a few words. I knew I wouldn't get through a day without some kind of a slip. Thank you. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is uh, I enjoyed my omelet. Kenneth, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> And uh, it's uh, great to be here. I want to introduce you to a couple other of uh, our uh, parole board uh, members who are here. Lucy Soto Abbey and Sheila Dupre, who are both uh, members of the parole board who do a lot of the hearings uh, here in Western Massachusetts. And then uh, Stan DeLeo, who is a parole officer who uh, covers this, uh, this part of the state, I I'm sure is known to, uh, to a lot of you. Um, at parole, uh, our primary focus is reentry. And our approach that we uh, try to advance is connecting with community partners um, in order to make sure that the parole process, the reentry process, goes well for all of our parolees. And parole officers, there's only so much that uh, one person can do. Um, but there's a lot that we can do together. And this is a model that has been advanced by Sheriff Garvey, trying to create a community here that connects uh, to a community, a reentry community, uh, when a person is released. And Parole is just happy to be part of that. And uh, we thank you for your leadership, Sheriff, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much. And just before we have uh, Commissioner Corbett come up, I just want to thank, in particular, the probation departments from Hampshire County that show up here on a monthly basis. Uh, you people have been wonderful. Month after month for the last nine years, you show up, and uh, we couldn't do this without you, absolutely. And uh, it's a group I'm really proud to work with. So with that, I'm going to introduce Commissioner Corbett. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mindy, for those kind remarks about our staff. Thank you, Sheriff, for inviting me. I have to say that the invitation from the Sheriff to be here, along with my colleagues uh, from the other branches as well as from our department, is a symbol of the kind of collegiality that the Sheriff has stood for as long as I've known him, and frankly characterizes the relationship we have with Sheriffs across the state. That's what makes our partnership on reentry work. 
is that we feel and are always treated like true partners. So I appreciate the invitation, Sheriff, and I'm happy to be here. I will just I will say a couple of words about reentry and then stop. But I, I hope, uh, just on a personal note, I thought I'd mention this. Uh, I'm from the eastern part of the state, but uh, my two children and I are graduates of uh, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Uh, so I feel a local connection uh, here. Uh, when I pulled into the parking uh, lot th this morning, this is no I'm not just saying this for this purpose, um, and, and shut off my car, I looked in the rearview mirror, and I have to say we all do challenging work and are weighed down by it some time, but I noticed uh, a bigger than average smile on my face and kind of chuckled to my face. I want to tell you why, just an, just an aside. I don't know that it ever gets better than this. Last night, my daughter took me to the Beach Boy concert in Boston. And in this morning, in this morning, I'm in God's country. I, I don't know what heaven's like, but I don't, think, I don't think it can improve on that, to be very honest with you. So this has been a great 24 hours, I want to say that. Um, we are all in on the partnership of reentry. It, it's shown by the actions of my colleagues here who are on the front line and really define what probation is. It's not defined by what the commissioner does. It's defined by what my very talented colleagues do every day with you on behalf of the Commonwealth and on behalf of the people that we serve. Um, we're joined at the hip on reentry. There's no question about that and a growing number of the people that we supervise in probation we are getting on the back end instead of the front end. Um, and we welcome that challenge and the only way that's going to work is if every day we live out this, uh, this sense of partnership and communications and meetings together and so forth. So we are, we are all in on that. Um, I'm very struck, just a final couple of comments, I'm very struck by the themes that have been mentioned already because after 38 years, if I've learned anything, um, and some days I question that, but if I've learned anything, it's that words that have already been mentioned are the most paramount, most important concepts in corrections. Dignity, respect, and hopefulness. If we can find a way to exercise the, in all of us the enormous authority the state has invested in us, the enormous power we have over uh, individuals. If we can wield that authority in a way that is just, charitable, and looks to give people opportunities to change their lives, that act itself, over and above anything else we do, the manner in which we conduct ourselves and try to instill hope in people and treat them fairly, and whatever they've done, treat them fairly and respectfully uh, every day, then there is some hope for the future. Every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. Uh, now, on the culinary crew, um, I do have a thought on that. I think it's time for the Office of the Commissioner of Probation to establish an executive dining room. <laughs> so I'd like to take your staff to do that. Nice to talk to you folks. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And I knew I had all these people come up here for a reason, because they are touching on most of the names that I would be you know, belaboring later, did I, did I get this person, did I not? Uh, and as I introduce uh, Commissioner Spencer, we have 41 state inmates here today. And on any given day, ADS Tudor or myself get, and this doesn't even count the letters that go directly to the sheriff, um, 10, 15 letters on a daily basis from men who are asking to come here because they want to participate in our life skills program. So it's a program we're really proud of. We're really happy with the relationship that we have with the state and we, we benefit from having the men here who are part of our program that we have here. They're happy here. They're getting something great out of the programs. They let us know. And with that, I would like to introduce Commissioner Thank you. I'm glad you didn't ask me to sing because I disappoint all of you. <laughs> I uh, first would like to uh, start by uh, talking about the, the good sheriff here. Sheriff Garvey is um, one of those unique leaders. I uh, believe it or not, before I became the commissioner, I met the good sheriff at, uh, I believe, at a ACA convention. We were getting ready to uh, go up for accreditation 
Uh, I don't really think he knew who I was, or I don't think it really mattered. Uh, it, and I don't think it does with the sheriff. He um, graciously uh, took a seat by me and spoke to me and treated me with uh, some of those key words that uh, my good friend from probation talked about, integrity, respect, and most importantly, he gave me his time, which in my opinion is the most important commodity that any one of us have. And when we can give that to someone, that's a true uh, gift. And, uh, and I will never forget that. I don't know if you remember that, but I will never forget that. And, um, and it's funny, as a, as a good leader, I think you need to build bridges early in life because you never know when you may have to cross it. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure the day you were talking to me, you had no idea I'd be the Commissioner of Corrections. <laughs> but, uh, you know, God works in strange ways. I am thankful for the opportunity, but most importantly, I'm thankful for the relationship you and I built early, and it only gets stronger, and thanks for having me here. And uh, I, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm a U.S. citizen, but I was not born in America. I was born in the Cape Red Islands. And uh, I speak to my dad every day. He's 98 years old. And one of the things that uh, we exchange all the time, it's a, a little saying, Now what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and good leaders, I believe, possess this. They don't exchange saying for doing. Before they say it, they do it. And Sheriff Garvey, you are one of those. And let's have a hand for the sheriff. <laughs> now, we're here at a re-entry breakfast, and I'm very glad to be here, and I'm glad to see that our re-entry uh, commitment in the DOC is working, because as we were going through the line, um, this young lady told me that uh, quite a few of them are DOC inmates, and, uh, and they're definitely modeling the way and doing the right things here, and I'm glad for that, because I'd hate to have them come here and embarrass me. Uh, <laughs> the sheriff's house, so, uh, then I'd have to take them back. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Um, I've been in a lot of facilities in my time, uh, not as a resident. But uh, uh, I did start my career as a correction officer. I've worked in all different capacities. I've been a superintendent for over 17 plus years in different facilities. And I've been in this job for a year and a half. Last year I had the opportunity to come and tour uh, Hampshire County. And it's funny, for, you know, the first impression is a lasting impression. When we walk through this facility, um, you, you just, you, there's a certain feeling that you get that uh, people are connected things are happening, inmates are engaged, and those are all key elements to good reentry. And I believe that's happening here. Um, and I want to just contest one thing. I'm not sure if it was 41 or 38, but uh, it has stayed inmates, but... Uh, 41, right? 41. Whatever you say, it, I'll swear to it. Uh, we've had a long lasting relationship with Hampshire County and the Sheriff. Uh, our classification department uh, has, uh, could always depend on, uh, on uh, having inmates come to Hampshire County and be treated well and be able to re-enter successful. Re-entry is good public safety. And re-entry happens not because of what I say or what I do or what uh, the, uh, the good undersecretary or probation or parole. It happens because people are committed to it. People uh, who may, who will make reentry work. As one, we do good work. United, we will do great work. Thank you. Thank you for that, Commissioner. And with that, I'm going to introduce our. Uh, our next speaker, who brought many of us together about a month or so ago for a three-day rethinking re-entry opportunity. And uh, it was three really, really long, intense days. And uh, I know that I feel like, I think I can speak for everyone. I think everyone came out of that with some great 
opportunities. I know a couple of the things that we noted ourselves when we were there, we started to work on straight away and they actually happen to be things that they're doing in Hamden County. So, you know, we'll be working on some of that with them. And uh, it was definitely a very beneficial three days. And with that, I'm gonna introduce the Under Secretary, Sandra McGroom. Good morning. Good morning. That was a healthy good morning. I love that. A lot of times you say good morning and people are like mumbling, they haven't had their coffee. But I, I think um, today's breakfast, everybody has commented on it. And I was teasing the commissioner when I came in. I said, I know this is your second time around. This is your second. But uh, I think we'll both be lining up for seconds because the food was just fabulous. I think we should give all those uh, men and women who've been working on this a good job. Um, some, earlier this year, I had come out to um, visit Hampshire County, and like many uh, of my colleagues before me who have said, Sheriff Garvey's leadership is exemplary. And when, when I came out, I came out with some colleagues, and Sheriff Garvey brought us into his office, and he said, look at my office. You know, I go to some of these other counties, and they got bathrooms in their offices. They got a suite where they can go put their feet up. He's like, look, my office, we can barely fit in here. And I'm doing God's work in God's country. And he also said, we don't get too many visitors out here. And I actually like that. <laughs> he said, we just put our head to the ground and do the work. And we do amazing things out here. And it's not that we're proud of it, but we like to be left alone sometimes. But Sheriff Garvey, I have to say, when you put on a breakfast like this, yeah, you're on the map, man. <laughs> um, but he, uh, Sheriff Garvey is just so uh, gracious and open and uh, accommodating. My, my trajectory to becoming an undersecretary is a little unorthodox. I never worked in a facility. There's lots of reasons why uh, folks who've been doing this for 30 plus years, you know, working behind the walls, um, that bring different types of experience would, you know, take a second look at um, me as I'm walking through the door and I'm talking about policy, et cetera. Um, and um, Sheriff Garvey has openly and welcomed uh, me into his fold, me into um, his wealth of knowledge his wealth of experience, and I'm uh, ever so grateful in the amount of respect and support um, that he's given me personally, but also the executive office and our efforts to uh, move this re-entry agenda forward has been um, wonderful. Right after that uh, visit, Melinda sent me an email. She um, thanked me for coming out. And one of the things in your email, I don't know if you remember, um, said, that you think Hampshire County is the little engine that could. And uh, I think you are a big engine that does, and uh, you should all be very proud of the work uh, that you do out here. I, I wanna uh, just mention, people, uh, Melinda has talked about the fact that um, we had a three-day reentry conference, which was a very powerful experience, very difficult during that three days sometimes sometimes wondering how are we gonna get through this? What does it all mean? Uh, Chairman Wall was there, Commissioner Corbett, Commissioner Spencer. We really had representation from the entire um, community of law enforcement, the community of folks who are gonna be working on the ground. We had um, community leaders. And, and we came away with stuff that some, some things weren't new. Some things people are already doing what's happening in Hampshire County, um, what's happening in many other counties, but the leadership here and the work that you all do around reentry is already in place. And we don't wanna change that. We wanna grow and build on the things that you're doing. You talked about a therapeutic community, bringing back uh, human dignity and, and allowing people to have these very intangible but very powerful things around hope and dignity, um, that there is some sort of promise, understanding that Many of the folks who end up in our correctional system, I'm, I can't stress enough, have never ever had a first chance, let alone a second chance. I, I think we are very self-righteous in the comments about giving people a second chance. 
Um, so we, uh, the administration is completely focused on the fact that um, people ha are gonna come back to our communities whether we want them to or not. The decision is what are we gonna invest in those folks so that when they come back, they're healthier, they're sta more stable, they have a sense of, of pride and purpose and possibility to succeed. And I think that's the work that you all do every day. And anything that I personally can do um, and that the administration can do around uh, reentry and the effectiveness of our efforts around reentry, um, I am uh, ever committed to that. I'm going to end just quickly. During that conference, a couple things came out. I'll tell you two. We had people from employment there, the housing industry, um, and one, one woman who I dealt with over time, etc., cetera, um, runs a very large shelter. All of you probably know it, but the Pine Street Inn in uh, Boston. It's run by um, Lydia Downey. And we, they were working in a small group, and she stood up and she said, you know, we're talking about reentry and the continuum of services, et cetera. They're trying to work on more permanent housing for people, and she said, and I never knew I was part of a reentry continuum. Now that, it took me aback a little bit because obviously we don't want to send inmates back to a shelter setting. That's not ideal. And I know many of you in this room, we all work to get uh, better and more permanent housing for folks as they're transitioning back. But because we end up depending on those shelters, it was kind of shocking to hear her say that. But it was a stark reminder that there are people who work in their own specific industries who may not understand their place uh, in this work of making sure that people can find stable footing when they get released. And the work that you do and the relationships that you develop, the fact that you can pick up the phone and that the people on the other end of that phone understand their small role in this reentry continuum is vitally important. And we have to stop and remind ourselves as we're working so hard that there are people who do this every day and don't fully realize the critical role that they're playing in your efforts to help that inmate um, stabilize him or herself as they get back into the community. The last thing I'll share about that conference, um, one of the participants, a gentleman who volunteers at the Department of Correction has been instrumental in facilitating lots of community dialogues. Uh, his name is Pat Parker Roach. He said that he was reading a paper one morning and he came uh, across a quote by Machiavelli. Um, and I think it really uh, synthesized uh, some of the work that we were doing in those three days. And I hope it means something to you because I think um, it's, a, it's profound. And it goes like this, it says, it ought to be remembered that there is nothing more difficult to take in hand, nothing more perilous to conduct, or more uncertain in its success than to take the lead in the introduction of a new order of things. Because the innovator has for enemies all those who have done well under the old conditions and lukewarm defenders and those who may do well under the new. As you continue this work, know that we're in this perilous place um, and we have lukewarm defenders of all those people who might do well. And we have enemies who have already done well under the old order of things. We're, we're embarking on a new order and I would encourage you to keep up the excellent work. Thank you so much, Sheriff Garvey. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mayor Narkowitz. Good luck on your uh, tenure as mayor, uh, D.A. Sullivan. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, congratulations on the ninth uh, annual breakfast. How about the gentleman from Culinary Arts, our chefs for today? We have a big round of applause.
know, we were all in here last night setting the room up till about 9.30. And um, we said, you know, I, I looked at a number of the guys and I said, this is the stuff that I really, really, really love. You know, um, and we have a picnic here for our volunteers every year and that's one of the best, the best events um, that, that we host. We have all of our volunteers come, all the program participants are out here and you know, it's like one of those cookouts or being out on my grandma's um, uh, step there in South Boston when I was a little girl and just kind of sitting and, and uh, you know, listening to what's going on in the neighborhood and we've got all these groups here, 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 and here. And I mean, the only thing they don't do is uh, play knights in white satin when it's time to go in. <laughs> But uh, it's, it, you know, it really is a, it's, it's, it, this is a unique place. It's a place that we're really proud of. And I'm gonna ask Michelle if she's got a couple of, uh, some updates for us, as well as I think a little presentation from the Needs Puppy Program. We've heard a lot about a um, Rethinking Reentry Conference that ADS Katie participated in about a month ago. Um, and it was great to realize that Hampshire County seems to be right in line with many other facilities in terms of reentry. Our monthly roundtable meeting provides an opportunity to communicate with outside agencies regarding inmates' discharge plans and overall adjustment while serving their time at this facility. Vocational education programs like Serve Safe, Culinary Arts, and the Needs Program teach valuable skills that the inmates can take with them on release. And in addition to that, our reentry staff assist all treatment involved inmates in creating an individualized discharge plan with referral services so they may continue addressing their high risk issues when they are released. The conference also provides an opportunity to initiate improvements that Hampshire County can make, particularly in tracking recidivism rates. We recently began tracking our own recidivism rates and plan to work with both Marty Lyman and Jen Sorty to look at improving our tracking system for the future. I don't like that noise. <laughs> <laughs> to take a snapshot of our release from two years ago, we've learned the following. Men who were successful being released from our treatment units were 20% more likely to be successful on the street than those that release from a non-treatment area. The needs program boasts a 10% recidivism rates for those who participate in that particular program. Likewise, inmates who obtain their GED while they are here boasted a 10% recidivism rate. So that's something to be proud of. We look forward to tailoring our studies to track released individuals on the one and three year marks and to include specialized programs such as the needs program that demonstrate particularly high reentry skills. The needs program, which I'm very proud to be the liaison for here at the facility, um, it, was, it came to the facility in 2001 and since its inception here, We've been able to train over 30 puppies who um, move on to work with children, with adults with disabilities, with veterans, and um, it's been a wonderful asset here to the program. We have a number of people here too today who worked on our labyrinth. Um, I see Patrick, I see Kathy. Uh, if you'd like to take a walk out to the back and see the labyrinth, we're happy to do that for anybody who would like to, you know, like the opportunity for that. There are some plans in the back. Patrick, our architect, is here. Uh, Kathy, one of the labyrinth facilitators, and a, um, she had been an employee here with us for quite a while. Uh, she's here. And I believe a couple of the gentlemen who have done a lot of the digging and the plantings are here as well. And some of our guests here have supplied the flowers that are lining the labyrinth and, some of the, and obviously this beautiful centerpiece and some of, the other, uh, some of the other things that we have. And we've got people here today from the A to Z program as well. We had an activity last night, um, it was game night here, and uh, we also had ice cream. We did that, I actually saw it on TV, you know that, that part on Nesson, does it work? And they filled that ball with, what, what, milk and I don't know what else, ice or something, and throw it around until it becomes ice cream. 
And anyways, it worked. <laughs> and it was very good. And you know, it's really amazing the time that kids get to spend with their dads here and that we all get to know them. And you know, we meet, we have family meetings. We do, you know, we do things like that. Uh, and it makes an incredible difference. You know, you walk in at night and they, you know, this, these kids say, hi, Mindy, because they know who you, because they, they know who I am. You know, and it's not someone you need to be afraid of. It's not someone you need to, you know, look out for. It's someone that, you know something, when you come up here a couple of nights a month, we play games or we learn science projects, things like that. Uh, the, there are people here from our bag share program today, the men over in our minimum and pre-release. Uh, they supply bags to cereals, right? And uh, are there a couple of other places? Uh, and, you know, the people that participate in that are here as well. We couldn't possibly thank everyone that, uh, that we need to thank. Being a small facility, we rely a lot on our volunteers. So our monthly reentry roundtable, we have you know the state police, the local police, probation, parole, and ServiceNet is there. ServiceNet is our mental health provider, and they're also our local community provider for mental health and for substance abuse services. And um, we've got the VA here and Soldier On, and they do, they do plenty of groups with the men inside here as well as you know picking them up when they go uh, when they when they go up there we have some guys that go there during the day and they return to the minimum and pre-release in the evening when i came up last night a member of our local recovery community from aa was here in a truck and he picked up three young men from the pre-release building and i said where are you off to and they were off to an aa meeting and when they came back they told me you know how great the meeting was and you know, these are the things that, that we really want to focus on. We really want to help people to reconnect to the communities that they're going to return to. And we can't do it alone. We're a small place and we rely heavily on the community. We have so many volunteers and so many great law enforcement and uh, agencies that we work with. And we just want to take this opportunity to be able today to say thank you to everyone. You know. Um, one of the things I say to the inmates a lot is that uh, it's a saying, it's a quote from Dick Cavett, the old talk show host, and it says, he said, it's a rare man who wants to hear what he doesn't want to hear. And when you come in here, you're going to hear some information that may be tough. You know, some things may need to change. And guess what? You've got strengths you might not even be aware of as well. Uh, you know, you can do the Amherst College class, but guess what? You, there are other school classes that you're probably going to need to do and participate in and be accountable to show up for to be able to go to that class. And the professors that we have that come in from Amherst College who teach here are wonderful. They bring with them 12 students from the Amherst campus, and we have 12 students here. They, we call them the inside and the outside students, and the name of the program is the inside outside program right inside out great thank you for helping me with that so again if you'd like to see the labyrinth uh, we you know we have people that can take you out back and you can go down and see our labyrinth if you have any questions we have plenty of men who are here who are able to answer questions about the many treatment programs that we offer and many of our volunteers are represented in this room as well and uh, you know, there's a line from the big book that says, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. And we like to say, you know, it's not like a little bit of this and a little bit of that, or I like this and I'll do this and I won't like that, so I'm not gonna do that. You know, we do valid assessments when people come in so we can determine what's needed. And, you know, we have a great labyrinth program because we also have great groups on, you know, criminal thinking or errors in thinking and, uh, victim impact, things like that. So everyone supports each other. And to all of you, thank you. We couldn't do this in a vacuum. To our speakers, thank you very, very much for coming today. We're really appreciative of that. And enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you. Thank you.